Do you feel powerless, unseen, unheard, unvalued? Are you living an inauthentic life driven by the expectations and demands of others? A life dictated by your past, your wounds, your scars? Well, it's time to break free. Join Ellie Sheffy and her special guests as they guide you on a journey to leave the chains of your past behind and step into a life of your own design. Welcome to You Are Not Your Scars. Here is your host, Ellie. Hello and welcome. Today's guest is an award-winning radio and television host who has been using her voice as a force for good on the airwaves for over 20 years. Passionate about ridding the stigma of mental health and helping people use their voice and share their stories, she is a champion for women and an impassioned advocate for a variety of women's issues. A lifelong performer, she has graced countless stages across the country. Currently, she is the host of Wisconsin Women and the morning show host of Krista and the Morning Rush, Madison's first all-female radio show. She recently won Station of the Year at Wisconsin Broadcasting Association, and she was honored as the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's Woman of the Year. Welcome, Krista Hatcher Ullman, to the show. Welcome, Krista. Hello, beautiful girl. It's so wonderful to see you, and thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you for being here. Now, when did you first discover your love of the stage and how did that lead you to broadcasting? Well, fabulous. Well, you know what? I was a huge lover of improv, so I loved watching a Saturday Night Live as I grew up. When I was younger, I wanted to be an attorney. Then I knew I wanted to be a dentist. And then when I fell in love with Saturday Night Live, I was like, this is the jam, girl. So I actually went to school for theater for Turbo College in La Crosse, Wisconsin. And that's where I like fell in love with so many things because I love like Chris Farley, Adam Sandler. And then, of course, song parodies was everything to me. So that was really something that I was inspiring to do. I wanted to do like the Saturday Night Live. I wanted to go to Second City. So that's where I fell in love. And that was really what I was interested in doing. And it kind of got me into where I'm at today. Amazing. So what have been your biggest successes in your career? And conversely, what have been some of your biggest challenges? Oh, that's a great question. Being able to fall into broadcasting is such an amazing adventure that I've had to be able to, once again, I was a senior in college uh, doing my acting recital and I was able to do my improv and to be noticed that way by a phenomenal man by the name of Dick Record in La Crosse, Wisconsin, saying, hey, I think she has something. I'd love her to get into what we do, which is radio. And I've never done morning radio. I knew nothing about it. I just knew how to talk. So being able to persevere in this industry means everything to me. Like you said, for 20 years, I've been working really hard at doing that. And I think being a woman, doing my thing, being vocal about what it means to me to host a morning show was everything. So I'm really ecstatic to be able to have had the opportunity to host a morning show for the last 13 years, and especially to be able to host a morning show, the first all-female morning show in Madison, Wisconsin, has really been everything. It's just been such a great ride. So I think just being able to do that, it's just uh, meant a lot to me, and I'm so thankful and honored to do it. Now, that could not have been easy. It's never easy to be a trailblazer. It's never easy to go first and to pave the way. And I'm certain that there were substantial obstacles that came up or maybe people who didn't believe in you or who didn't think there should be an all female radio show. What were some of those challenges and how did you navigate them? I think what's really important, and I think for any person that wants to persevere in what they want to do, and especially just being a woman too, is to be vocal. And I think 
not being afraid to stand up for what you want to do, especially in an industry, if you are going to be, hey, we don't do this where we're at. Well, I knew in my heart, like I saw other women outside of where I was living doing something like this. And man, I was like, that's what I want to do. And I think it's super important, even if you are scared to like approach maybe your boss about something, at least know that if it is rejected, you are able to vocalize it and know that you'll never regret that you didn't say something and stand up at that time. This industry is amazing. There's so many different personalities. Some you won't jam with and some you will. I think the most important thing is that you respect the individuals that you work with and just make sure that you're all on the same wavelength that way because it can be challenging too. So how did you find your voice and the courage to speak up for the things that you want and for advocating for an all-female show? My host at the time, Marco, he had to leave. Sadly enough, I had just lost my mother and I came back and unfortunately his father had gotten ill and said, Chris, I don't want to go through that painful thing that you did as well. And I said, okay, it was hard for me because I was like, oh no, I don't want to lose someone. And it's always hard when you have a partner that wants to move on. But at that time I was like, we established a really great show. We had been on together for like almost two years. We were almost going to get uh syndicated at the time. So I knew we were doing really well, but I also knew too, that I didn't want someone else to come in and take over the show. Cause I'd worked so hard with him. So I was like, you know what? And I had just gotten back from something called morning show Boot Camp, where people all across America and outside come together to see the best in morning shows. And my company had been sending me there. And that's when I saw women that were actually hosting their own shows. So mentors of mine are is like a DD McGuire. She's fierce. And I was like, I want to do this. I've always had like the co-host position. I've always hosted a morning show as well. But I was like, man, I want to be a woman to do this. So I just went in and told my boss, like, we're interviewing to have somebody come in, but I want to be this person. And he's like, Chris, I have a hundred percent faith in you to run with this, make this a woman focused show, do what you can and let's rock it out. (laughs) That's amazing that he was so supportive of you. And that's a true testament to the relationship that you developed and the show that you had developed that he was like, yes, girl, do it. I believe in you. So what is the best advice either that he gave you or that someone important to you, someone close to you has given you? I have been very lucky and very thankful to those in the industry that have always been there to be able to allow me to like reach out to them. Maybe if I was feeling like, uh, maybe questions that I had. I think it's just really important that when you work with someone and especially someone in this industry or a boss or a coworker is that you know that they have your back and that you have their back. This show and things that I do in this industry and in the community mean everything to me. So I think having trust is super key. So I'm really appreciative to those in my industry that have been with me through this. Like Randy Hawk, he's my ops manager. He's the one that said, yes, let's do this. To ones that I've met way back, Guy Dark has been someone that has mentored me and has always been there for me. So I really think it's super important when you create relationships with people in your field that you can continue. I never believe that you should ever try to hurt other people to try to get ahead in this industry because that'll always come back to get you. Absolutely. So sounds like you've had great mentors and great relationships and that they've really been there for you to be sounding boards or to help guide you. What's something that you wish one of them would have told you along your journey that would have made your journey easier? Wow, that's a good question, Allie. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What's the golden nugget that you had to find out the hard way? (laughs) I love you. That's why, girl, I just, you're so fierce. To what maybe I spoke up maybe even earlier, it's so interesting, your journey in life, you know what I mean? Because you change, right? You change in the motions. You change as you get older. Man, I'm where I'm at today. I am who I am today because of maybe those things that I did go through in life that really make you stronger today than you were back in the day. Because there are times where 
I did quit a morning show job because of how I was treated. But at that time, I was like, I wasn't vocal. I kept everything in. But I was very young, very naive. There are some times that I have spoken up and maybe I should enough because I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to get myself in trouble. That's just a really good question. But I think I always stay true to myself. Sometimes I would have been nervous. Anxiety gets in the way. That's something I do deal with. Anxiety, and sometimes that can be isolating on someone. And maybe you're not able to vocalize because you're too scared at that time because that's a real thing. Anxiety can really mute you at some time. So just always stay true to yourself and don't be afraid. Maybe sometimes I was too afraid at sometimes to do things. Maybe I could have advanced myself a little faster, but I am, I am here. <laughs> yes. And staying true to yourself. I mean, what wiser words could there be, right? Stay true to who you are and your values and your mission and watch what happens. So as a public figure who is very open about having navigating through anxiety, how do you tune out the noise of the world? And when that anxiety comes up, how do you navigate that and the the effect that it has or the critic that then comes and the voices in the head that comes and the narrative and the self chatter. How do you tune all that out? Mental health means a lot to me. Ridding the stigma of mental health uh, means the world to me. Mental health has affected my family. I tragically lost my stepmother to alcohol. I have a family member that's been dealing with it, unfortunately, and living behind bars because of it. And myself, again, I am someone that has been touched with depression at one time. In college, I actually was in such a dark place that I did try to take my life. Not until then, though, did I seek help that I was able finally to understand what it means to talk about inner pain. And I think it's super important that we rid the stigma of mental health. And anytime that I'm able to talk about it openly with people helps me inside. So Something that is near and dear is to help those in my community when it comes to ridding the stigma of mental health. And I think it's getting better, but a lot of people are made to feel shame if they are feeling depression or anxiety or if you do have suicidal thoughts. So what are some of those tools that you use when the tools, the processes, the routines that you set up for yourself to help you navigate? My family has a lot to do with that, being able to have loved ones that are always there to support you. I'm also a true believer in therapy. That's something that I do still. I do seek help when I feel like sometimes I'm getting into a low part of my life. But having friends, having family is so important because I am someone that likes to keep things in. I'm a quiet person. I grew up that way. It's just kind of how my family was. If you felt like you were going through things, it was like, oh, you're feeling sorry for yourself. So I'm not the best at talking about things. So that's something, though, that I'm gradually, as I've gotten older and being more open about it. So having my family be there to help me, talking to my friends, and then being able to talk about this on the radio and putting on radiothons and helping others helps me as well. Such a testament to... You being a force for good and using your voice and your platforms as a force for good because you shine such a light on these really, really important issues. And I think particularly during the pandemic, we've seen an exacerbation of the mental health crisis where people are now more isolated. There's more uncertainty, more fear, more lack of connection. And for you to be able to shine a light on it and talk about it so openly, what would you say to the audience members who don't have a supportive family or don't have a family at all? Where would you suggest that they reach out for some connection for someone who can help? See what your community can offer you. There's always such tremendous support in other ways that can help you. If you know maybe someone, a coworker that you've heard them talk about maybe things that they're going through, I know it can be a very scary thing. It can be a very personal thing, but reaching out to those that you know are going through it, they would be more than willing to help you get through the things that you do. So I would highly recommend that, especially with 
If you feeling like you're going through suicide, pick up that hotline. There are always people that are willing to help you get through those dark times. It's so important. Your life is everything and it means everything. And there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It's just finding the right connection and people to help you. And there are always people that are willing to help you because you deserve it. Absolutely. Now, you are passionate when it comes to so many causes, ridding the stigma of mental health being one of them. What are some of the other causes that you're passionate about and why are they so important to you? Oh, thank you. Uh, Yeah, there's quite a few that are very important to me. This past year had just had ran a campaign for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. That was an honor to be asked to run as a candidate. I have five people in my life that had been touched with blood cancer. I've lost family members through it. My best friend lost her child to blood cancer. I have a dear friend whose husband has a very rare blood cancer disorder. So it's important to me, I think, whatever I could do to bring awareness to what blood cancer means and how we can help. Other things that are very important to me, of course, is childhood cancer. We are a part of raising awareness and funds in our community as well with the American Family Children's Hospital Radiothon. I'm a big advocate when it comes to stopping child abuse. This is near and dear to my heart as well. I have a best friend that was sexually abused as a child, and it's so important that we protect our kids when it comes to that. I am someone also that has been, unfortunately, been through sexual abuse four to five times in my life. No one should ever be able to put their hands on you. And someone that's been through sexual abuse or physical abuse, that's something you'll never forget. You never, ever forget the sounds, the voice, anything like that. So it's important that we stand up for those. Absolutely. And as you know, through our interactions, I also share that background. And I've also shared those experiences. And unfortunately, we are not alone in our experiences. It's far too prevalent for women who have been abused or raped or violated in so many ways. And so it is definitely something that unites us as champions for women. And I know it's a fuel for me and a fuel for you as to really that passion of helping to shine a light and helping people to use their voice and tell their stories so that we can rid the stigma, so that we can bring awareness, and so that we can really bring an end to these events. So you mentioned that this has happened to you several times. How have you overcome the range of emotions that result? It's something I think that I'm still kind of like sifting through. And I think sometimes I'm wondering, wow, is that where my anxiety comes from? Because it happened when I was first in sixth grade that I was almost raped. I was able to get away. And it's just so interesting, Ellie. It's like it happened in sixth grade into a situation in seventh grade where it happened again. And then throughout my adulthood life, I've been in situations where it's happened It's hard sometimes because you feel like, God, did I do that? Am I to blame? Did I put myself in that position? And it's like, no, it's never okay. At one time, I'm like, am I just an easy target? Because I've also been mugged twice. I'm like, what is going on? You feel that inside, but I know that it's not my fault. And I know it's, unfortunately, it's people that that's a sick mentality that if you feel like you can do that to somebody. Mm Mm-hmm. So I think it's important to be able to forgive yourself. If there's ever blame, you're never to blame for that. And especially as a child, Mm -hmm. I did not vocalize it when I was a kid. I kept it to myself when it happened when I was both in sixth and seventh grade. So what made you decide to speak out and share your story? When did you feel ready? And when did you know that being a public figure, having these platforms that you were going to use them to speak out and share your story and to provide a platform for others to do the same. Interesting enough, me talking about the sexual abuse is something that I haven't always been open about and being able to share with this. Honestly, Elliot, talking to you on my show really opened up a lot of love in my heart 
to see that that is something that is very empowering to open up as well. I think I've been more secretive about those past things and being able to see like someone like yourself and other women that are open to sharing more about that means everything. I met a phenomenal woman in this community who fled her country because she was being abused by her husband to save her children. And I met this woman a couple of years ago when I was hosting TV and I interviewed her and she's tremendous. Her name is Nella Kalpik and she's been on my show many times. And she had asked me to be a part of a law out here in Wisconsin called Marcy's Law, which allows people who have been victims of abuse to have more of an output of a voice when they're in a position. It breaks my heart to see and to hear women who have been abused. I can't even wrap my head around that. And also my best friend two Christmases ago, unfortunately, her boyfriend at the time did tremendously horrible things to her and that she's here with us. I'm so thankful for. So I do this and I'm more vocal today because there are so many people that I know, women that I know that I've been through such horrible past with abuse, whether it be physical or sexual. So I need to use my platform to be vocal about it. And so I feel it's my opportunity. It's my job to do that. That's so powerful. And I know we align on that. And I don't know about your experience, but for me, the more I shared my story, the more open I was about abuse, rape, domestic violence, living in hiding, being homeless, living in my car, being a medical miracle, defying doctor's death deadlines for over 20 years, being a cancer survivor, all the things that the more I showed up authentically, vulnerably, fully, the more free I became. The easier it was to breathe, the more joy there was in life. It's as if almost every time I share it, a weight is lifted. I can breathe deeper. I can laugh more fully. I can connect on a deeper level. And I know for me, it was scary initially to open up and start telling my story. And so I hear you completely with kind of those initial emotions. Are you finding that the more that you share, the more empowering and freeing it is for you as well? I do. And there's more things that I know inside that I know when I'm ready, I'd like to share. And you're absolutely right, Ellie. Anytime that you're able to talk about things like this, it is freeing. It does allow you. And it's a great thing to be able to connect with other people in this world. And I'll tell you what, girl, when I first met you, I was not kidding. I told other people that I know, women that I know about you. I'm so inspired by you, as so many are. Oh, thank you. Now, you have overcome a lot as you're sharing on your journey. What has been the most helpful tool or practice that you have used to heal? I think laughter is so important. Whatever you can do, to get yourself into a place where you can smile. So whether that be you go and you play with your cats, because that is something that I love doing. My cats make me happy every day. It's just so important. When you're with your children, I have a beautiful daughter, Gia, who's 11. I have a beautiful stepdaughter, Raven, who's 22. Spending time with your kids is everything. You learn so much from your children too. And talking about kiddos who are perseverance, I mean, Seeing them means everything. Being able to connect with your spouse, that means everything too. I think find something in your life that makes you laugh, makes you smile. Dancing makes me smile, honey. I love to put on my jock jams. You should see me. Girl, I'm like 44. I think I'm still 18 and I will crack my (laughs) hip. It will be real, but I don't care because it makes me laugh. So dancing to me is everything. I love music. So uh, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I knew we were connected because I do the same thing. <laughs> do you like some Jack Jams, girl? <laughs> oh, goodness. Crank the music and have a dance party in the living room. I yeah. am down for that oh any time. That is absolutely my go-to trick is crank the music and have a dance party <laughs> in the living room. I do it at least twice a day, even if it's only for a few minutes, have the jam come on and pop up and just get the blood flowing, get the laughter, get the movement. 
get into those feelings. Feel like you are Beyonce. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, girl. <laughs> Channel that inner Beyonce. Because who runs the world? I <laughs> just, you That's know. Right, have that empowerment, that laughter, that moment of joy, right? Just to bring that energy back and shake off some of the stresses of the world. So I love that it's just embrace you, do you, do right. you, right? Get up. If dancing is your jam, feel it. Yes, channel your JLo, channel your Beyonce. You are a king, you are a queen, you are all of that. Feel it, love it, embrace it. So yes, self-care is critical. I mean, on the same topic of laughing and joy and playing and connection and the things that light you up and fill you up beyond just having a good old dance party or a good belly laugh, what is your self-care practice? and? How do you ensure in your crazy busy schedule that it remains a priority? Well, outside of like us, that we like to get our dance <laughs> on, whether it be just in our rooms or I'm dancing in the studio, I also love weight training. I love strength training. I like getting into the gym. I like how that feels. That's a great way to let steam out if you need to. I also love when I'm around my house. I used to be a clean machine, like clean machine. <laughs> Uh, I, I've, I'm not as good as I used to be, but cleaning my house really allows me to like do some stress relief. So that helps sometimes too. So that's really, really important. I meant to say earlier too, I think it's really true too that allowing yourself to be who you are is like everything, right? And I was just going to say, especially as kids, like it's so important that you just shine bright the way you are. And if you're different, you know what? Be beautiful and different. I lost my eye when I was five from a broken hockey stick and I used to be made fun of all the time. But my mom always said, Krista, they're just jealous because they have to see out of two and you just have to see out of one. And so I took that and I made that into making people laugh, by the way, as I grew up. I used to take my eye out all the time. I put in people's cocktail glasses at bars. You just got to do. And so that's amazing. I just think that too, just be you and be quirky and love that part of you to shine that way too. On that topic, how do you stay aligned? How do you stay aligned in who you are in just owning that and exuding that? I don't have time to worry about other people and what they think of me or if they hate on me. I believe that you just do what makes you happy and you just keep doing it. As long as you're not hurting other people, just remain in your body and do what you love to do and what makes you happy and your family happy. No one's got time for haters out there. And that's a really true thing too, especially again, going back to helping out our kiddos. And I still deal with this being in the public eye. All people say things to me, but I don't acknowledge it. I think the biggest power that you can give back to someone who is maybe trying to bring you down is you don't respond to them. Mm -mm, I'm not going to respond. So. I love that because I think especially nowadays with the pandemic and the isolation and everything being online and that being really magnified, whether it's the time on social media or all the new platforms that have developed or all the time spent on Zoom, I think there is definitely an increased influence of the external and an increased presence of online bullying and cyber stalking and those kind of things. And to our young folks who are out there in the audience, beyond just not responding, what piece of advice could you give them to stand strong, to not succumb to the pressures and everything being with a filter and <laughs> photoshopped right. and all of that? What would you say to them for them to just embrace who they are and not pay attention to the external? Sure. Just always remember, if someone is ever trying to get you down, I remember when I grew up, my mom and grandma, they were the force behind me and how I was raised. And they always said, Krista, make sure you treat people the way that you would want to be treated. And when someone is trying to maybe make you feel bad about yourself, 
they actually are feeling bad about their own self. So whenever anybody is ever trying to put you down, it's because they're having insecurity within themselves. And if they do feel that way, you know what? Be the bigger person. And if you feel like that maybe they're hurting inside and see how you can help them. But again, if someone's trying to bring you down, just don't let it happen. It's something that they're going through. And and that's kind of like, Ellie, what you said with social media and kind of how life is. People put themselves out there. They portray themselves. Oh, my gosh, everything looks perfect. But in actuality, it's not. So you can never judge a book by its cover and always be aware of that and cognizant, and, but just always be kind. Oh, I love that. Be kind. The world <laughs> needs more kindness. Yes, they do. <laughs> Some more kindness. So being a mom... Mm-hmm. What are you hoping to instill in your daughters? I'm hoping to instill in them kindness, number one. Number two, perseverance. That was something too that my mom and grandma <laughs> taught me. They're like, Krista, first off, get your education, then a career, then a man. <laughs> so that's how I grew up. So whatever their journey is, I just want them to know to stay true to themselves and whatever they want to become. I support them. Just live a life that they want. That's amazing. So if you had one message to share with the world, and I know this is a hard one because you have so many and with so many incredible platforms and passions and lessons and so many hats that you wear and so many incredible messages you have to share. But if you had one message to share with the world, what would that message be? I think it's always important to let people in your life know that you love them. And Mm. you say thank you to those that have been in your life that have gotten you to where you are today. I think it's really important because life is so short and those people that you love can be gone in a second. I'm someone that has lost both my parents and I know in my heart that they still see me and I still talk to them within myself, but you just never know when that person in your life is going to be gone. So just always remember to pick up the phone and say hi, or just a quick message to those in your life that you love them. It's so important. That's what we're here for, right? Just spreading love and letting those that we're here because that's what life is all about. It's not about the money and what we have. It's the people that have impacted our life and that we've hopefully done the same thing. I think That's what we're here to be on this planet for is to be there for each other. So hopefully you do. (laughs) Amazing. You read my mind. So now let's imagine that you have come to the end of your life best lived. Lived. It's a life of love and contribution and connection where all of your dreams have come true. What do you want to be remembered for? What is your legacy? I hope that people will remember me that Krista, she was a quirky redhead that was kind. She believed in helping out her community. She loved her family and she just wanted to do good on this planet that we're in. So I think it's important that you shine and you be bright and hopefully that will happen. This has been such fun connecting. As we wind down, are there any parting words or messages that you would like to share? Well, in this crazy world that we're in, as I know, as it is, just keep doing your thing. Take care of yourself. Stay healthy. Take care of your family. Take care of your mind and just keep plugging along. We're all going to get through what we're going through right now. And Just keep pursuing your dreams. Dreams are always there and they always can be reached and it's up to you and you can do it and just showing and sharing love. And I'm just so appreciative and I'm so honored. Again, when Ellie asked me to be a part of this, I'm like, are you kidding, girl? I'm like, are you kidding? I'm like, Ellie, this is Ellie Sheffy, everyone. (laughs) So thank you, girl. It's it's like tremendous. Oh, now how can people connect with you? How can they learn more about your work and the causes that you're passionate about? Oh, thank you. Well, we are on social media. The morning show is called Kristen the Morning Rush. So I'm on Instagram, on Facebook, Kristen the Morning Rush. 
I'm on LinkedIn, Krista Hatcher Allman, connected with this fabulous woman and so many. So thank you for that. Also, the radio station that I work at is 93.1 Jam. So it's at madtownjams.com. Yeah. And I'm Krista at madtownjams.com is my email. <laughs> you all can the, come to my house. All the ways. Look out. You're going to be inundated yeah. because you are such a light and such a powerhouse of someone who is truly aligned in their mission, their passion, their purpose, who lives every day as a force for good, who uses your voice, your experiences, and your platform as a way to help others in your community and to really support women and to help women rise. So thank you for all that you do in the world. I know it is not easy, especially when you're in the public eye, to share your story, to be vulnerable, to open up and share different aspects of your story, to say yes, struggled in the past with depression or anxiety, and this is how you're navigating it. And these are the resources that have really helped you. And such an inspiration to others because they can look at you and they can say, wow, here is this woman who is standing in her power, who is hosting a TV show and hosting a radio show. And if she can do it, I can do it. Or if she can do it, what's possible for me? Right. And so you're a living example. And I am so grateful for you. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot. It really does. I think it's like, like you said, it's important to be able to do that. And I truly believe in this too. There is a book that I read, The Five People You Meet in Heaven. And it's the same writer with uh, Tuesdays with Maury. And, oh, wow. Um, yeah, I read that book after my dad passed away. And it talks about you meet people in life for a reason to get you to the next level of where you want to be. And I truly believe in that. So I remember when I met you, like, I really didn't mean that, but I do believe in that. Yeah, you know, I, absolutely. I, yeah, that things happen for a reason in life. And it is sometimes hard. There was a time at my life where you asked why, why is this happening to me? I remember asking I went to a Catholic college. I asked a nun, I said, why is it that some people go through such hardships and others are just like, nothing happens. Like they're all great. And she goes, well, Krista, the people that suffered the most in life, they're the gold in God's eyes. And I'm like, wow. I was like, that's when I was like in a really downtime in my life. So I had, had asked that. So I don't know. It's just like, I think through all of our journeys, it's interesting. But I think there's a reason for it. I think everything that we go through, if it's hurtful or not, there's a reason for it, that it molds us. And I think it's important that we do something with that. Because I know just speaking with someone like yourself or for other women that have maybe gone through things, the, the best people that can help you are those that have been through it. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a saying, life happens for you, through you. Mm, I like that. Mm -hmm. And that to me is so powerful because in the darkest moments where I have said, why me or why this or why now, or when I've laid in a hospital bed and told God, okay, you win, I'm done. I don't have any fight left. Take me now. I'm done. And in all of those moments that happen to all of us, no matter what we've gone through, those moments where we question, the moments where our strength fails, the moment where we're tired, the moment where the belief that something could be different is gone. In those moments, when we get through them and we're on the other side, we can help so many people because we've been there and we've navigated it. And it's not something we learned in a book. And it's not something that some guru taught us. We know what it feels like in every cell of our body to have our voice taken. We know what it feels like in every cell of our body to 
have unimaginable pain. We know what it feels like in every cell of our body to be discounted or unseen, unheard, unvalued, unrespected. We know what that feels like and we know how we shifted, how we navigated it, how we rebuilt our life into a life that we love. We know what it feels like on the other side when we're having dance parties in our living room. <laughs> and the joy, <laughs> the joy and the fun that awaits even in those darkest moments. So true. Mm. And that's what makes what you're doing so powerful is because when you share those stories, when you share those moments, when you share those experiences and you share the dance parties in the studio and you share the good times with your guests and the laughter and the fun, people know there is light at the end of the tunnel. So everyone run out and connect with Krista. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And for all of you watching, thank you. And till next time. Thank you for listening. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of You Are Not Your Scars. Be sure to implement the tools and strategies shared today as you create a limitless life. Know that you are worthy, you are resilient, you are unbreakable, and you are unstoppable. Find more episodes of this podcast at youarenotyourscarspodcast.com. While you may have been forged by fire, you are free by design. <laughs>